What is the blasphemy? Uh, what is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? Okay, uh, that that comes from uh, a, a couple of different places. I'm just going to start in the first gospel, Matthew chapter 12. Jesus is uh, talking with um, uh, some Jewish leaders, and um, the Pharisees, it says in chapter 12, verse 24, it says, now when the Pharisees heard it, Jesus cast out a demon. When the Pharisees heard it, they said, this fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. And Beelzebub is, uh, it's another name for the devil. It was a Philistine deity, but it it is another name for the devil in that culture. Jesus knew their thoughts, and he said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Every city or house divided against itself will not stand. That's a good verse for our nation right now. Uh, Anyway, he says, if Satan casts out Satan, he's divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? And so he answers their issue. I didn't cast him out by the devil. The devil doesn't cast out demons. And and so that, that would be ridiculous. Um, then he goes on and he says, verse 28, but if I cast out demons by the spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man and then he will plunder his house. He was not with me is against me. He who does not gather with me scatters abroad. And then Jesus says this, therefore I say to you, Every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven men. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it'll be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him either in this age or in the age to come. Then he says this, either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for a tree is known by its fruit. Brood of vipers, I mean sons of snakes, How can you, being evil, uh, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, by your words you will be condemned. And so Jesus gets on these guys pretty pretty hard uh, when, when they do this whole thing. Uh, taking the work of God, the obvious work of God, and they're attributing it to the devil. And so Jesus doesn't say that they committed the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, but he warns them that they're in danger of doing exactly that. And Jesus in, in the passage says, it's not that you're speaking against me, it's that you're speaking against the work of the Holy Spirit. And that's that's the, the focus that he gives here in this passage. And so when I look at the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, um, I, I don't think it's when somebody says, I blaspheme you, Holy Spirit. I've had guys say, say that they've said that to me. They come up to me and uh, they want to commit their life to Christ. And they're like, I'm, I'm afraid you know, that I can't because I blaspheme the Holy Spirit. I go, what do you mean? What are you, what are you talking about? And they'll go, well, I, you know, I knew about the verse in the Bible. And so one time I said, I blaspheme you, Holy Spirit. And so I'm done, right? That's it. I'm just going to hell. And uh, obviously um, that is not something that cannot be forgiven. There's a, there's a passage where Jesus talks about the work of the Holy Spirit. And it's in, uh, it's actually, it actually starts in John chapter 14, but I want to start in John 15. This is in verse 26. It says, but when the, whole, when the Helper comes, and it's talking about the Spirit, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. And so it's the work of the Holy Spirit to point to Jesus, to testify of him. He goes on in, in chapter 16, and in verse 8 it says, and when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they do not believe in me, of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you see me no more, of judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. And what what Jesus is saying there is that the work of the Holy Spirit, specifically uh, what he does in, in an unbeliever's life, is he convicts them of the sin of not receiving Christ. That's the first thing he does. He, he, he shows them who Jesus is, and if they are resistant to following Jesus, 
the Holy Spirit um, works on their heart and guilts them up. That's what convicts me. Uh, he guilts them up about the fact that um, they haven't received Christ. So he'll convict the world of sin and of righteousness, of judgment, of sin, because they don't believe in me, of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you see me no more. And what Jesus is talking about there is his righteousness. The reason he's going to the Father is because he's absolutely righteous. That's, that's why Jesus gets to go to heaven, because he's perfect, right? And so the Holy Spirit is not only going to be speaking about uh, to people about the fact that Jesus is somebody that they need to follow and that they need to give their lives to, but the, the, uh, the Holy Spirit is also going to be working on them in the area of showing them that Jesus is absolutely righteous. He's the guy that he said there he was. And you can tell that. Uh, most people, um, they, they don't say, oh, Jesus was a jerk. You, know, you almost never hear that unless you've got somebody who has heard something like this and they want to harden them things, themselves to the things of God. They don't, they don't do that. And it's because of the work of the Holy Spirit. And the third thing is of judgment. And it says, because the ruler of this world is judged. And uh, the third thing that the Holy Spirit convicts us of is the fact that there's going to be a judgment. There's been a judgment on Satan. There's going to be a judgment on every single one of us too. And so the work of the Holy Spirit is to guide us into all truth. And I'll give you that verse in a second. And to... Uh, witness, testify of Jesus and of the fact that we need to commit our lives to him, of Jesus' righteousness and of the fact that there's going to be a judgment. It goes on and says, um, however, when he, this is in verse 13, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak of, on his own authority, but whatever he, he hears, um, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me for he will take of what is mine and de de declare it to you. And so it is the job of the Holy Spirit to glorify Christ. It's the job of the Holy Spirit to testify of Christ. It's the job of the Holy Spirit to, te to convict us of our sin and of the fact that Jesus is righteous and the fact that there's a judgment that's coming. And it's the Holy Spirit that guides us into all truth. And if we um, decide we don't want to have anything to do with that, if we refuse that, if we turn away from that, which is effectively what the Pharisees were doing in that passage, then we're in danger of blaspheming the Holy Spirit. And so basically, uh, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is the ultimate and total um, rejection of the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. It's, it's ultimately rejecting Christ. And that is the one sin that cannot be forgiven, the rejection of Christ. And so um, anybody who... Uh, has ever come up to me and said, I'm, I'm afraid that I've blasphemed the Holy Spirit. I, I'm afraid that I'm done. I've always said to them, well, I know for sure that you're not that, and that you haven't. And they go, well, how do you know? Because you wouldn't be asking me the question. You wouldn't be worried about it at all. If you're worried about it at all, then you haven't blasphemed the Holy Spirit. Um, it's when somebody has gotten to that point where they're so hardened to the things of Christ that they can say anything about him and uh, and refuse any work of God in their life and just become just totally um, anti-Christ, anti-God, um, that they've uh, finally and, and completely uh, rejected Christ, and that would be the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit.